Hey, what's going on guys? This is going to be a quick video about how to paint the sleeves markings on your kits. So this particular kit we're going to be working with today is the Master Grade Shenanju Stein narrative version which recently came out. And the reason why we're going to be working with this one is for a couple of things. I've actually covered how to do the reverse wash technique in a past video in my work in progress video on HGUC Kshatriya. But one thing that I forgot to mention in my review of this kit recently is that there's actually a seam line down the middle of the sleeves parts here. So I want to show you first how to remove the seam line on these parts. And the other thing that I want to cover is how to make white lining and also how to make gold lining. So if you want to do gold instead of white, we'll do both for these on the sleeves. So let's first, we can just start off by just taking these parts off. All right then, so these are going to be the two parts we're going to work with for the video. Uh, we're going to do one in gold lining and one in white lining now. For right now, I've just got the foil stickers on here. So let's just go ahead and take those off first. All right, and then so here we can see the seam line in question. Now, a lot of the sleeves kits have these HG and MG versions. Uh, have seam lines on probably usually the same wrist areas. So uh, it's just real simple seam line removal the way you would normally. I'm just going to use some of Tamiya's extra thin cement here, just slather that between the parts. But the thing is about when you remove seam lines, you guys may, may well be aware of this, is that uh, oftentimes uh, when the sanding process after you glue it, um, sanding will kind of lower the details a little bit. You'll kind of sand away some of the details. And so with this, when you're going to for the reverse wash technique that we're going to be doing, we want to keep this detail as much as possible because lowering that uh, any further down will just kind of make the reverse wash technique a little bit harder to do. So just make sure you use plenty of glue so that when you press the parts together, you're going to get that nice uh, bead of glue coming up from the seam. Also, it's fortunate on this kit that we don't have to worry about doing any modifications or anything to this is that uh, the part that we're sealing inside of here is just that little gray part inside there. If you really wanted to paint that separately, it really won't be too hard to mask that. Otherwise, I mean, I wouldn't really even bother with it. All right, let's so press that together. You can see I'm getting the glue coming up out of the seam, but that's good. So it looks messy right now, but it's better that it looks like that uh, at this point than having not enough glue. And then that's where you end up having to go back in and either add more glue or add some putty or something like that. And that is going to make it harder. So at the moment, that is going to be good. I'm going to glue the other one and then we're going to wait for that to dry. Probably uh, give it at least a couple hours. If not, for the sake of it, just give it a day. All right, and then once that's had some time to dry, I'm just gonna take a sanding stick here. This was originally a 600 grit stand, sanding stick, but as you can see, it's pretty worn, so it's probably more like a 1,000 now at this point. Basically, you just need something that's just going to get the job done for you, so uh, I'm just going to sand this a little bit, just see what we're, what we're working with. It's black, so it's kind of hard to see uh, how good or bad it is just right off the bat, so. Let's give it a little bit of sanding first. But after sanding here, you can see there's a little bit of unevenness that these parts didn't fit together to be like perfectly flush. So this side was a little bit higher than this one. So you're gonna have to just sand that a little bit. Now, again, the problem is you don't wanna sand too much because that's gonna make it hard to do the reverse wash technique. Uh, so you just have to be a little bit careful about it. Just judge it, uh, you know, how bad it is. This one, I, I, I feel like I can sand it down some more and get rid of that and it'll be fine. It won't be too much, but if it's really bad, then in that case, you might need to use some putty, but in this case, and for most of the cases, I feel like it probably shouldn't be all that bad. It's going to go ahead and sand this some more and see how it's going to look here. So then once we've got all the flat sanded parts looking pretty good, I just want to clear out some of that dust. So I'm just going to brush it a little bit with a toothbrush here. Uh, and then you can see where there is the problem where we need to clean out the glue in this little gap here. There's a little tiny bit of seam line that's between this kind of like leaf looking detail and this line. So basically there's a number of ways you could do that. You could like go in with a, a chisel and just kind of chisel through that over the top of it. You get a really super tiny uh, small piece of sandpaper or something and try sanding that. I'm just going to use my knife really carefully. and. Again, this is just the kind of thing, just do whatever it feels most, uh, feels comfortable for you. Uh, I'm just comfortable using my knife for something like this, but just going to use the flat edge and just really gently just drag it across that just to kind of uh, get away that glue there, just kind of scrape it away without digging into the actual part. All right, so there we go. It's looking a little bit rough now. I mean, if you look at it, up closely but the seam is gone the glue sticking out is gone and so once we get some primer and paint on that uh, you won't see any of that roughness there so it should be fine let's go ahead and get this ready for paint now we've got this part sanded. we need to go ahead and sand the rest of the edges here first before we move on any further some people will sometimes ask me do you really have to sand like the entire kit 
before you painting uh, and probably not but it's just a better idea if you can just sand as much as possible it's really annoying and tedious and it takes forever and it's super boring uh, but it does end up giving you sharper edges you know nice flat nice surfaces uh, and it helps for the paint to stick as well but uh, once you do that then obviously the parts gonna be pretty dusty it's dirty from the dust and from your oil from your hands so that's why now before painting we need to go wash this as well so I'll give this a little just wash with some soapy water soapy warm water let it dry and then we'll go over and uh, start priming it so for the primer I'm going to be using Mr. Surfacer 1200 it doesn't really matter what primer you use if you aren't using an airbrush you can also use just spray can primer for this instead And now once you've got some primer sprayed on there, this is actually a good time to check. Check uh, your sanding, make sure you don't have any rough areas, or your seam line removal. Again, make sure you just got your seam line removed entirely. If you have any little specks of seam that are still showing, it's a good time to just go in and either use a little bit of super glue or a little bit of putty and re-sand those, reprime, and uh, just make sure you get a really good, nice finish on that before moving on to painting. All right, next up for the one that we're going to do with white lining, I'm just going to use here just Mr. Color number one, gloss white, simple enough. Again, if you're not using airbrush, you can use just white spray paint. Okay, now for the gold side, I'm going to use uh, Mr. Metallic Color Brass. Actually, I have gold, but I just like the look of brass a little bit more, so I'm going to use that for the gold. Uh, but you guys may have heard this before, is before you do gold, it's usually a good idea to do black first. I actually don't have any gloss black on hand at the moment, so I'm going to be using a gloss midnight blue. I have flat black, but gloss will just work a little bit nicer. The reason you use black, especially gloss black under gold, is just it helps make the gold shinier, brighter. You get a brighter shine out of that. So uh, I'll demonstrate on a spoon as well, so you guys will be able to see the difference right next to each other with black and without black underneath again. This is midnight blue. It's very dark though, it's almost like black, so it'll be well enough so you guys will at least be able to see the difference between the two. Okay, and then for the next step, this is really important that you use enamel paint. Now, this is where it's going to be a problem if you aren't airbrushing because the enamel paint is not available in spray can form. So what you'll have to do is just try to brush it on by hand. That said, if you're going to be airbrushing, you can just spray this out of your airbrush like normal. The reason that it has to be enamel paint is that enamel paint, as well as enamel thinner, is not as strong as lacquer paint, which is what we were using before. And so what we're going to do after spraying this, when we go to wipe the enamel paint away, it won't also wipe away the lacquer paint underneath. And as for the enamel, if you're using flat or gloss, it really doesn't matter. In this case, I'm just using flat because it'll make a nice contrast. But for the lacquer paint, it is better to use gloss just because that will make it easier again for the paint removal process. If you aren't using gloss paint for the lacquer, um, then you might want to give it just a gloss coat before you go ahead and spray on your enamel paint on there, but that's just up to you. Just having it glossy will just make your, your life a little bit easier. Now real quick, let's come back to the test spoon here. So I sprayed the, the black or the midnight blue on this side of the spoon and there's not on this side of the spoon. It's going to be a very negligible difference, but you can see, or I hope you guys can see on the camera, there is going to be a really slight difference. The side that has black underneath it, it has like a little bit more like heavy feel to it. You get like a much kind of more solid, like heavy uh, looking gold. Whereas the side without that, it looks a little bit lighter. You can definitely see just a little bit kind of lighter tone to the gold. It doesn't look quite as strong as intense of a shine where it does. It's, sorry, my compressor just kicked on. Anyway, and you can also see like the reflection too. You get much more of a like a reflection on this side compared to this side. It's a little bit more just kind of blurry. You can see like just this kind of like blurry shape of light, but on this side you can see much more like defined reflection on this side. So it's not really that much of a difference, but as you can see, it does help a little bit if that's the particular look that you want to go for.
And now once you're done with that, the other important thing to remember is that enamels take significantly longer to dry than uh, lacquer paints. So if you're just spraying lacquers, you can pretty much just touch the part right after you paint it. It's almost dry instantly, at least to the touch anyway. Enamels going to take a lot longer to dry and then cure. So just for the sake of it, I'm going to let this dry at least a good 12 hours, probably 24 hours. That will give it enough time to completely dry and start curing before we go on with the next part of the process. All right, and then simple enough, the last step is just take a Q-tip or cotton swab, whatever you want to call it, and some lighter fluid. You can also use just uh, enamel thinner for this, although I feel like lighter fluid usually works a little better. It's not quite as harsh, so you don't run as high a chance of messing anything up. So I usually just like to stick with this, and I only use uh, enamel thinner for thinning enamel these days. So just drop a little bit on a Q-tip, wet that up, and then you're just gonna rub this along the raised edge just carefully, gently, and it'll take a little while for everything to start to come through. But just go at it slowly and carefully until that starts to come through. And then after a while, it finally starts to look pretty good, and here is how they're going to turn out. Pretty good. Uh, not super perfect you can see I messed up a little bit on this one but basically what you can do to touch that up is just take a little bit of enamel paint you could just repaint the whole thing and just go at it again or just take a little bit of thinned black enamel and just kind of touch that up with a brush it would be the easiest way to do that but it's up to you how you want to go about fixing that but uh, yeah I think this this way does work pretty well it's really not all that complicated relatively easy to do and it ends up looking pretty good, probably better than you would be able to get with the stickers or the water side decals. So hopefully this little uh, video has been helpful for you guys if you're interested in doing this technique. And let me know if you have any other questions or comments down below. I'll try to answer those for you. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs>